I'm offended. That's offensive. That's offensive. You should do something about it. I'm offended. That seems to be the society we live in today. I hate it, but I do understand it. I understand why we exist in this society now. And look, it's everywhere. It's everywhere you look. Everybody is offended by something. Something creates outrage. You remember, we covered the Peloton commercial the other day, and people were mad about it. A stupid exercise bike. We have Disney+. Plus. They're putting a disclaimer. I'm not making this up. They're putting a disclaimer before all the Disney classic movies that says, quote, this program is presented as originally created. It may contain outdated cultural depictions, end quote. Why? Why do you need a disclaimer? Who is really benefited by putting that disclaimer on there? Does that disclaimer help the mental state of a single human being on the face of the planet? No, it doesn't. Oh, it's not. There. Oh, there are a million examples. There's a high school in San Francisco named after George Washington. They're voting to take down the historical murals across the school depicting a dead Indian and slaves in the cotton fields. But there's a dead soldier likewise in another mural. But Indians died in the cotton fields and so did slaves. History is now offensive. Oh, yes, you bet it is. It goes on. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I bet you didn't realize how offensive that was. It's been slammed for Santa and the other reindeer bullying Rudolph. It's a story about overcoming bullying. That's part of the... Whatever. Huffington Post had a tweet in 2018 saying, quote, the holiday TV classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is seriously, are you ready for this word? Problematic. They love that word, problematic. Charlie Brown, bet you didn't know that was offensive. They had a Thanksgiving movie. Everybody's seen Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving movie. I can't believe it still gets aired on TV because they actually read the Bible. But it's been deemed racist because a black character is sitting on one side of the table alone. Who, uh, honestly, just keep that screen up there. Who in the world looks at that picture in the Charlie Brown Christmas movie and finds racism in it? You have a seriously sick, twisted worldview if that's what you get out of that. Other examples, well, we all know about the high schools and professional teams changing mascots. I believe it was the Anna Bra uh, Atlanta Braves this year, no longer do the tomahawk chop. You're the Atlanta Braves. Brave is a complimentary. Never mind. Another high school canceled a Tarzan play and changes to the 12th night Christmas time classic, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Oh, yeah. Never mind. This is everyone. Uh, Christmas time classic song, Baby, It's Cold Outside, got banned from radios last year because it has to have a more Me Too friendly version. Not only that, I believe it was John Legend and Kelly Clarkston recently did a you know little duet thing and they say the new lyrics that are less problematic i'm not making that up jj abrams oh you'll love this confirmed there will be a gay character in the next star wars film because it has to be inclusive because we all haven't been waterboarded with the lgbt message quite enough you have to now have one represented every single place you go so what is all this because it gets hard to understand and i will tell you it's one of the things I hear the most feedback on from people. It frustrates them. They don't understand this world. They don't, why is everything an outrage? Why does everything have to be changed? Well, two reasons. There are two reasons behind it, and I'm about to tell you what they are. The first one is the most boring reason, but it is a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a job, right? Well, if you're watching my show, you likely have a job. If this was a Democrat show, you probably didn't. But you have a job. That means you have to go to work every single day and you have to do something the boss tells you to do. You have a job. Understand that there are so many writers and journalists out there, and there are more graduating college every single year. And what do they do? You went to your commie high school for four years. You then went to your commie college for four years, and you learned that journalism is supposed to be Democrat activism, and you walk out the door, and where do you go? Well, you go to write for any one of a million writing publications out there, something like Huffington Post or Slate or Daily Beast. Writers got to work. Writers got to eat. And you walk in the door, and what are they telling you? Do you think you get to walk in the door of a writing establishment and just write something whenever you feel like it? Whenever you feel strongly about something? No. 
you have a quota. I need an article. I need two articles. You got to write on something. So what we see, what so much of what you see is a board writer that has to come up with something. And what sells? Like being offended. If it bleeds, it leads. These people are offended. This group is offended. Oftentimes, if you dig into who is actually offended, who is actually complaining, it's some loser on the internet. It's some group somewhere of five people looking for something to be offended by. The writer finds it, writes out a nice, scary headline acting like this is something big. The world's on fire over this. And then it gets spread across the internet and you and I get to look at it and be like, why are people mad about everything? They're not. People are not mad about everything. Only a few people are mad. Which brings me to point number two. Why are those few people mad? Because they had bad fathers. I'm not kidding. Part of being a dad is this. You must inform your children, whether it be a boy or a girl, that your feelings, while they can be important, your feelings are not an action item for other people. But that is when it comes to, when it comes to parenting, that's something that's severely lacking out there. You see, we have parenting today that is kind and gentle and teaches kids that they're, they're the most treasured thing in the world. Well, you should treasure your kids, but you should also teach them things about controlling themselves. We have a society full of parents today where the kid will say, I want a piece of candy, and the parent says no. And then he starts yelling, I want a piece of candy, and the parent says no. But eventually the kid will yell loud enough and throw a big enough fit that he will get his piece of candy. That is how you raise one of these social justice warrior little monsters who is offended by every single thing underneath the sun. How does that end up? You end up with a 22, 23, a 30, 40 year old adult with no concept of the fact that your anger, your outrage, your offense, it doesn't mean anything. It's not important. Oh, you don't understand. I hear this all the time, especially when they're yelling at me. You don't understand. I'm really mad. No, I, I do understand. I just don't care. I get it. I get that you're mad. But I'm really mad. No, I know you're really mad. I'm sorry your dad never told you, but I don't care, and the world doesn't care either. This is on you, parents. If you're somebody who looks at Rudolph the freaking red-nosed reindeer and feels like you need to write an article and put out a tweet talking about the bullying in it, you are a loser, and your parents were likely losers as well, and I'm sorry about that. That's just the way it goes.